Hi, my name is Colin Jarvis and I'm the Vice President of Stealth Belt. I've had an ileostomy for six years now and today I'm going to talk to you about the top eight ways in which you can help to prevent or reduce the amount of leaks that you get with your ostomy. The first tip that I would give for helping to prevent or reduce the amount of ostomy leaks that you would get is uh, probably going to be pretty obvious. It's uh, to wear a stealth belt. And um, I, I found a stealth belt personally back about six months into having an ostomy and it made a world of difference. Um, I'm a very active person so I was looking for something that would help me do that. but. As I, as I wore the belts more and more, I found that it really did a great job of helping address some of the more common problems like leak prevention. One of the ways that it actually helps prevent leaks is your, by, by having the, the actual stealth belt hold the appliance on the inside, as, that, as the weight of that appliance fills, it will go into the, the belt itself and the weight is held up by the belt rather than relying on the adhesive to do that for it. So that makes it so even when if you're somewhere that you can't immediately empty your bag, that weight is going to be supported. And when it comes to reducing leaks, if you've got just a free hanging bag and it's, it's a heavier bag, then you're asking more of that adhesive and it's more likely to give out on you. So having a stealth belt can definitely help in that way. Additionally, the stealth belt's also designed so that the bottom layer of the belt that's, uh, that's cut in there actually has, uh, it's cut to the size of your flange so that when you tighten it down, this bottom layer actually applies a gentle pressure to the adhesive around the flange and that just helps that adhesive do its job a bit better. So it kind of approaches the, the leak problem in two different ways. The second strategy I'm going to suggest for helping reduce the amount of leaks that you get with your ostomy is to really get a sense of how your digestive system works for your body in particular. And what that actually means in practice is take note of when you eat, how long it takes for output to start after that moment happens. I found that personally, it takes between 30 and 45 minutes after a meal for output to come through the stoma. And it's not the output that I'm actually, the food that I'm eating in that moment, it's the food that I've eaten from the meal prior and it's kind of still in my intestinal tract. But when you start eating, it fires up your digestive system and then it pushes everything else out. So I, I know with a fair degree of certainty that if I eat 30 to 45 minutes later, I'm going to have output. And being armed with that knowledge really helps me be able to uh, plan my day. I actually use that the same strategy every single night before I go to bed. I know that if I eat food, that within 30 to 45 minutes I'm going to have output. So I actually give myself up to two full hours between my last meal of the day and when I go to sleep. Because that gives me plenty of time to make sure that the output has, has come out and that I've emptied my bag before I go to sleep. And that actually allows me to get a, a better night's rest. You know, some nights I may still need to empty the bag, but if I, if I eat too late and right before going to bed, the volume of output that goes into the bag at that time can be enough that it causes a leak or, or is just a lot more difficult to kind of manage in that moment when you're groggy and tired and trying to find your way to the bathroom in, in the dark. So um, definitely keep track of, of what you eat and uh, how long it takes for, for your body to process that. So tip number three is actually kind of related to tip number two. And the, the tip is actually just to make sure that you're emptying your bag regularly. Um, I know that most nurses and, and medical professionals will suggest that you empty your bag at around the one third of the way full point. And I think that that's really good advice because once you kind of go past that one third of the way full, you're putting yourself at risk for, for higher likelihood of, of leaks. Um, one, because as mentioned earlier, the more weight that the appliance has, uh, it's going to tug on that adhesive more and, and make it more likely to leak that way. The stealth belts can definitely help there, but again, you just like minimizing risks as much as possible. The fourth leak prevention tip that I'll share is making sure that you've got the right appliance and that you've sized it properly for your particular stoma. Many times when people get their ostomy appliances, they'll actually get them pre-cut. So they'll, it'll come cut out to the size of their stoma. And that's just to make things a little bit easier. 
but with that you just have to be careful that that space isn't too big and I, I from everything that I've experienced personally and that I've read around online it's best to make sure that this hole is as close to the size of your stoma as it can possibly be. If you have more than about a centimeter of space between the start of the stoma and where this adhesive starts, then you're setting yourself up for leaks and you might wanna look into some kinds of adhesive pastes to fill that in, or you can try and manually cut this hole without getting the pre-cuts so that it matches that shape. The fifth tip is just to make sure that you're taking really good care of your skin. And there's a bunch of different ways and a bunch of different information out there that will help you do this. But for me, the, the main reasons that, or the main things that I do to take care of my skin is uh, one, to make sure that every time that I change my appliance, that I really scrub the skin around the stoma. I'm not scrubbing it so hard that I'm gonna damage the skin itself, but I make sure to take the time with the hypoallergenic soap, so soaps that don't have any additional smells or lotions, and I get all of the, the old residue from adhesive, or if there was a leak, anything that was, that was stuck to the adhesive there, make sure that that all gets cleaned out, and that I, I scrub it with a, a damp towel just to make sure that it, it really is kind of getting in there and getting out any potential irritants that, that can get under there. For me, when I do make these changes and I'm cleaning it out, a lot of times I'll actually go in the shower and not have a bag on at all. One, it just feels great to not have a bag on for like 10 or 15 minutes while you're in the shower, and it gives it a chance for that skin to kind of air itself out a bit, and you know, I just like the way it feels. But I should also mention that if you're going to try the approach of uh, cleaning your stoma while in the shower with no appliance, that you can also use the tip from earlier about learning when to eat and when your output happens after that to make sure that while you're in there, you're not gonna have output while you're in the shower. Additionally, when it comes to keeping good care of your the skin health around the stoma, you'll wanna make sure that if you're somebody who has hair that grows underneath where the adhesive is, that you do a good job of grooming that and keeping it shaved. And the last tip that I'll give in relation to taking care of your skin is just to make sure that you're changing your appliance regularly. I know that most people do tend to change in that like three to four day window, which is, which is probably the best, in my opinion, time to do that. But some people are able to get like six or seven or eight days and they almost kind of make a game out of how long can I, can I get these appliances to last. And I think that that's probably somewhat ill-advised uh, if you, as long as your your insurance is and there's not like a, a problem for you to get more appliances, um, you shouldn't try and extend the lifespan too long on each of these because your skin really does need that chance to be cleaned and to air out in between those changes. So if you're somebody who finds themselves kind of pushing that edge, like how long can I take it? Maybe find where that edge is and then step it back a day or two to more like that four or five day range if you're if you're getting it down really well. And I think you'll find that the your your skin will thank you for it. So the sixth tip is actually to try a bunch of different appliances and adhesives. If you're going to have an ostomy for a long period of time, to go and get the free samples of everything that they've got and just try out different things. You know, it doesn't hurt, and especially since it's free samples the first time, you can you can get a sense for what works for you and what doesn't. One situation that I've come across pretty frequently is that people will have a setup that they've been given right out of the hospital and they've never tried anything different. And they'll be, they'll say, oh, you know, it, it works fine. But a, a lot of times what works fine isn't necessarily what works best. And unless you try what's out there, you can't really ever know what's best and you, you might not even really know what you're missing. So I always highly encourage people to try out all the different things. So if you're finding that you know things are working okay but there's still like little glitches, go out and explore what's there. It's gonna be worth it. Tip number seven is actually an extension of tip number six, but it's more specifically barrier rings. So barrier rings are these, these little uh, additional pieces of adhesive that are meant to go uh, underneath the actual appliance and against the skin directly. And they can help prevent leaks, um, at least in, in my opinion, they do a better job than any other add-on product that I've, that I've experienced. It took me probably two years before I tried my first barrier ring, 
and in that that first two year period I was getting leaks uh, probably once every two to three weeks and now I get a leak maybe once a month at most and I, I attribute that largely to having tried out different appliances and adding in just these these simple um, little barrier rings uh, they just they seem to make a really big difference for a lot of people so while you're out there experimenting with different things and leaking is one of the problems that you have I highly suggest looking into a bunch of the different options and I know that um, a bunch of the companies will give out free samples of these I again can't recommend that strongly enough And the eighth and final tip of this video is actually one that is personally the, the one that I like the most to talk about. And that is uh, having good posture to help prevent leaks. Having good posture can have a wide range of positive benefits in your life far beyond just reducing leaks. But when you think about when you've put one of your ostomy appliances on your abdomen, you're normally like standing up. Sometimes maybe somebody will do it laying down, but generally speaking, you're relatively, it's, it's going to be on a flat surface. Now, if you do put it on like that and then go to work for say, and then sit down in a chair, you kind of slunch, like slouch over, that will, that will kind of put this pressure on the adhesive. So it's, it's stretching the adhesive more and kind of it'll like crumple it up. And, and you know, if you've got an ostomy, you can probably feel what that's like just by like slouching over because where, where it sits on your abdomen is in, at a creasing point. And when you're able to sit properly and stand properly, that happens far less and the adhesive doesn't have that added strain from the bending. And so it can do its job better. So that was the eight different ways that I like to use to help prevent leaks from happening with my ostomy, and I hope you found it useful. If you have suggestions for me of other types of videos like this one that you'd like to see, please let me know. I'll make sure to get them put up and, and that they're made available. And uh, until next time, no colon, still rolling.